Well, we got quite the shock this morning when news broke that Embracer Group is buying basically the entire western arm of Square Enix. And it shocked a lot of people when it came down to the intellectual properties and me changing hands, as well as the purchase price. But I'm looking at all this and I can't help shape the, shake the feeling that there's a lot more in play here than, where, than is being revealed. We're going to talk about that here today. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave Plus channel, make sure you subscribe down below. Let's head over here. This was posted up on gamesindustry.biz. Give some backstory to what's happening here. We'll be talking about this in Newswave a bit more in depth when it comes to the deal that took place. But basically, Embracer acquires Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal for $300 million. This deal does include Tomb Raider, Deus Ex Thief, and a bunch of other intellectual properties, which includes Legacy of, Cl of Kane, which that's kind of cool to at least think that maybe we would see Embracer Group go back and remaster those titles for current platforms. It's something they like to do. I mean, we, we, they're the ones who have released Sphinx on the Switch. I think even a physical copy for it. So, yeah. Uh, Embracer Group is to acquire three major Western studios from Japanese publisher Square Enix, as well as its biggest Western-developed intellectual property, Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal will be part of the growing publisher, along with around 1,100 staff across the three developers spread across eight locations around the world for a total cash value of $300 million. That purchase price really caught people off guard because they're like, wait, hold on. The intellectual properties with Tomb Raider and Deus Ex and Thief and a bunch of others, it's only worth $300 million? Well, not necessarily. In fact, it's possible that Tomb Raider and all these intellectual properties are worth more than that. But I will point out, these studios, Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, Square Enix Montreal, weren't really making Square any money. In fact, it was revealed that the margins for these are very, very low, almost basically zero. So they're making games to make games, essentially. Like there, There's no real business sense behind breaking even on every single game you're doing. And we've seen... Some pretty serious issues come out of these uh, studios. Uh, I mean, the Avengers, we really have to talk much about that one. Uh, even Guardians of the Galaxy, good game, didn't really make them any money. They seemed pretty disappointed in it, actually. So I'm not too surprised to hear that Square is looking around and is like, how can we offload the, these, these Western studios? It sounds like they've been trying to do this for a little while now. And along with 1,100 staff, that's a pretty serious expense. And in Square's mind, there is a bit of a net positive in the sense that their expenses are going to go down from offloading 1,100 developers from these different studios to Embracer Group, and they're going to get $300 million in cash back. So, yeah, it's possible that Tomb Raider and all these IPs were worth more than that, but then 1,100 developers come into play with studios that aren't really generating money, and that could actually knock the value down. I think people look at studios, and they're like, well... That clearly they're worth money. I mean, they're, they're going to be selling studios. But WB Interactive has been trying to sell studios, apparently, for a while now. And they can't because they won't include any intellectual properties. Remember, the buyer has to have a reason to pick these studios up. And in this case, it was one large package that included Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, and more. And in a way, this kind of makes things a bit easier for Square since they will be, as they say, more efficient. In fact, they did have an entire uh, passage here as to why they did this. They say the transaction will assist the company in adapting to the changes underway in the global business environment by establishing a more efficient allocation of resources, which will enhance corporate value by accelerating growth in the company's core businesses in the digital entertainment domain. In addition, the transaction enables the launch of new businesses by moving forward with investments in fields including blockchain, AI, and the cloud. Yeah, technically, they sold Tomb Raider and these studios so they could invest in blockchain, sure. But I think what what they're saying here just, it sounds like they're trying to seem like they are ahead of the curve, right? And you say those kind of things to appease investors, shareholders, and potential companies that may be looking for more value in, in, in a way to raise your overall price to people coming in, maybe looking to acquire. And that's basically what I think is happening here. I believe that Square is downsizing and consolidating a bit in order to be more appealing for an acquisition down the road. I don't know when it would even happen because this deal with Embracer is set to 
actually go through sometime between July and September. So it's not like we're going to see Square pop up next week and it's like, oh, Sony's coming in and buying us or something like that. No, it would probably be towards the end of this year or even next year before something really happened there and we got the full press release like we see here with Embracer and Square. But something about this just seems off, right? Like, I think there has to be something else happening here, something else bigger in play, and that's why we see Square offloading these Western divisions and these intellectual properties. Tomb Raider is something they probably wouldn't do anything with without these Western studios. I don't believe they would bring Tomb Raider in-house to develop, so it kind of makes sense that it's going with Crystal Dynamics. Now, the thing that I'm having a hard time with is I don't know who would come in and even want to buy Square Enix right now. I mean... Sure, it'd be appealing to larger companies who would like the, the wealth of intellectual properties that would come with Square Enix. But, like, if you look at, say, uh, Sony, they already get all of Square's games for the most part. In fact, they will look around and attempt to do things like console exclusives and keep them on the PlayStation specifically as long as possible. Final Fantasy VII Remake was apparently supposed to have gone to the Xbox already, and Sony seems to have extended their time's exclusivity with Square. And I don't... Nintendo doesn't really buy publishers like that, so like, I don't think they would come in. There's still a lot of talk around if a company like Microsoft in America could come in and make that kind of a move on a Japanese publisher um, like Square Enix because there's always talk about, oh, it's a, like foreign investments and, and these sort of purchases have to go through like regulator approval and all this. And a lot of times they will block these, these sorts of things from happening. And obviously... Microsoft's going through a whole deal right now when it comes to Activision Blizzard, so I almost wonder if maybe even they could merge with another Japanese uh, company, publisher, developer, anything like that. It's always possible there. I don't know, something just seems like it's off a little bit here, and I feel like there's going to be a bigger story coming from this, where maybe a year from now we look back on them and we're like, okay that's why they sold all those studios off at that price with those intellectual properties to Embracer Group because they were looking to eventually merge with Capcom or Sega or get purchased by Sony, right? A lot of possibilities here. There are, of course, a lot of people right now trying to figure out what could happen, but, I mean, let's face it, it'll probably be something really boring like a private equity firm coming in and buying them or something like that. But I think Square... I think they're looking for a buyout. I don't know when it'll happen, but I feel like everything we're seeing today is sort of heading in that direction. But let me know what you guys think about this down below. Were you surprised to see Embracer Group come in and buy Square Enix Western Division, basically, with these intellectual properties like Tomb Raider and Deus Ex for $300 million in cash? Did that seem too low to you, too? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.